I'm sure many of you can understand this, that in 1982, when I tried to get into medical school, it was very competitive, and I could not get into any medical school in India. And then I was pretty dejected and tried again in 1983, after working one year trying to do all the entrance exams, and I did manage to interview at many places, uh, including CMC Valor, but I couldn't get into any medical school in 1983 as well. I was actually number seven on the waiting list at CMC Valor, and then I decided I would try one more time. So in 1984, finally, I worked some more, and somehow this time I managed to enter CMC Valor. Because it took me so hard to get into Valor, I knew that I had to make the best of my opportunities, that the reason I wanted to go to medicine was to make a huge difference to people in the world. The story of my academic career actually starts even before I was born. Uh, 1954, thalidomide was a drug that was synthesized in 1954 in Germany. Thalidomide was marketed between 1956 to 1961, 62 as a sleeping pill by Kemi Grunenthal. Kemi Grunenthal was a German company, and they thought that thalidomide was one of the safest sleeping pills around. At the time, the only sleeping pills available were barbiturates, and people could intentionally commit suicide or accidentally overdose and die. So this drug was marketed as a drug that was the safest because you couldn't commit suicide with thalidomide. You could get a very nice, peaceful sleep, but if you took 10 tablets or 20 tablets, you wouldn't die. You would just wake up the next day. And in mouse experiments, they found that there was no lethal dose that they could establish. Therefore, they said, this drug is probably the safest drug even for pregnant women. And so it was used for morning sickness of pregnancy. And it was marketed in over 40 countries worldwide as a very safe sleeping pill. And only in 1961 did Dr. William McBride, uh, obstetricians in uh, Australia, found that thalidomide, even one pill taken by a pregnant woman in the first trimester, would cause major fetal malformations. It was not like other teratogens, like, you know, occasionally somebody would be deformed. Every single woman who took it in, the, in that vulnerable portion of pregnancy would have this kind of malformation in the child.